right, we got a couple, couple more ladies joining in, and then we're going to get started. Let's see. I am super excited because we have a special guest today. Well, all of our guests are special. I'm really excited to get to play with Shelly. So today we are welcoming Shelly Clammer. She's an artist, a psychotherapist. She's a member of, I gotta look at it so I say it right, a member of the International Expressive Arts Association. And what I love about Shelly is I feel like she just, in this most gentle and inviting and welcoming way, gives us a big old permission cell permission slip to be authentic, to be ourselves, to explore our intuition. And that's what we're going to be playing with a little bit today. So welcome, Shelly. It's so great to have you here. There we go. Hello. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me, Elizabeth. Yeah, I'm so glad yes. you're here. Thanks for saying yes. So, <laughs> I love, we kind of had a different plan. And then Shelly was like, you know what? I think they need something else. And I love this. I love that you're just like, wait, this is what, this is what we need today. But here's what I think is great. We're going to be playing with like, not just intuitive imagery, but right. How do we tap into the messages from that imagery? So I know this week that we've done a couple of projects and I've heard from some of you, like, well, I don't know what it has to say to me. Right. So if you ever find that or you maybe you're really great at hearing the messages, but maybe you want to learn how to go a little deeper. I think today is going to be perfect for you. You want to tell us a little bit more about that, Shelley? Yeah. So today we're going to explore inspiring imagery. So typically um, as a psychotherapist, I focus a lot on the shadow, do a lot of shadow work with people. But today we're going to focus on inspiration and Inspiring imagery is uh, more connected to the soul rather than to the shadow of our human life, to the shadow of our psyche. And so to connect to the soul, there is a little bit of a process because most people are stuck in fear, stuck in fight flight. And so um, when we are fearful, when we are in our survival brain, which is kind of our practical, logical left brain that you know, we need to get through the day, to get through the job, to get the, get the kids to, to soccer and to bed and all those things that sort of that logistical mind, it's often fueled by kind of um, a survival fear. So um, if we're in survival mind, if we're in a fight flight lock, it's very, very hard to access inspiration and it's very hard to access the soul. So a lot of people who are stuck in fear, they don't even know that they have a soul. So um, I do have a little bit of a meditation today to um, soften into meeting the fear that we all have. So we all live in oh, a human body. We have a nervous system. And if we have a nervous system, we have fear. Everybody has fear. I know I have struggled with intense fears in my life and um, even you know, just recently I woke up in the middle of the night and I was struck with this kind of fear. And I have this practice that I do that I'd love to share with everybody here before we start the exercise. So it's a way of welcoming fear. And um, it sounds strange to think that, you know, you might want to welcome fear because when I feel fear, sometimes I want to Typically, I have, we all have our own coping mechanisms. For me, I get very hyper and I want to work a lot. Um, sometimes I'll clean the house from top to bottom just to sort of get rid of some of that anxious energy. Sometimes when I'm really in a lot of fear, I'll overeat because I want to kind of sedate that fear. And so you would all have your own way of, you know, working with fear. So those are kind of avoidance mechanisms or burning off of anxiety um, you know, procedures <laughs> that I'm talking about. But when we go into the meditation before we start this exercise, uh, we're actually going to welcome the fear and just soften around it because the only way to heal fear is through love. And it's, uh, it sounds very simple, but it has to be practiced regularly. So um, for me, I have struggled a lot, um, as I said, with fear, and I've had to be very uh, diligent about my nervous system regulation practices. And so this is just one exercise that I would like to give to you because it really works for me and I hope it works for you. So before we choose our images, I'm going to invite you to just close your eyes 
uh, for a few minutes. And whenever you feel fear, you know you're in the fight flight uh, aspect, the sympathetic side of your nervous system. And so right away, if you, um, pretty much everybody knows this, but if you take in a deep breath about five seconds and just breathe out for about seven, right away you'll switch to your rest and digest, right away you'll switch to your parasympathetic nervous system. So just gonna breathe in. You can even blow your breath out like it's a straw. This just activates your rest and digest and just take another breath. And sometimes if you're really stressed, you can use, uh, you can activate your vocal cords, which, which signals to the vagus nerve that you're, you're becoming calm. And so you can just breathe out a big sigh. So you can just go, <sighs> so already your brain should have switched and your body should have switched. And if it hasn't, just keep on breathing throughout this meditation. And the next thing we're going to do is because fear is held and stored in the body, we're going to look around. So just use your inner eyes to sense around and maybe feel somewhere where you feel tight or constricted, nervous or sore. You might have a, a jumpy belly. I have a little bit of a jumpy belly right now. Sometimes fear gets locked into our shoulders or our hips. So if you can just light upon one place, just find that place that feels a little bit constricted, a little bit tight, a little bit sore. Maybe it's very sore. And then just call that out for what it is. Just label it as fear and say, fear, you are welcome here. Fear, you are welcome here. You can just spend time in this tight place. Sometimes fear will intensify when you point your, your attention to it. Sometimes it will soften. But in order to bring love into the fear, which is often, you know, could be likened to a small child. For me, fear is often a kind of a traumatized, scared teenager. You can just consider how you want to offer unconditional love to this tight or sore place in your body or if you can personify it if it is a child if it is a baby sometimes you'll get an age that will pop into your mind sometimes i like to wrap my little ones in a warm pink blanket sometimes i send love from my heart and just Find a way to offer unconditional love. And if the fear surges and intensifies, you can say again, fear, you are welcome here. Fear, you are welcome here. And then find in some way in your imagination to offer this place inside of you unconditional love. So, because fear is constricting, you might feel called to move a little bit. I'm feeling called to kind of shimmy my shoulders. You might need to wiggle your hips or your toes, wherever you might be holding that tension. Just give it a little bit of movement to loosen up that constriction. And now we're gonna to go to one more place. So typically fear travels around the body I often experience it in my, my upper chest and it moves into my throat. You might experience it in your solar plexus. That's another place, your, your belly. So see if you can find one more place, another place that's just not feeling completely comfortable right now. And again, when you find that discomforting place, say again, fear, you are welcome here. 
And whether it subsides or softens or surges, keep saying fear, you are welcome here. And now you might sense in this different place in your body, maybe a different way to offer unconditional love. I'm all for the soft blankets. I offer it to many different parts of myself, but you know, you might have a way of sending love and light to this place. It might even tell you this place might tell you what you need right now. Sometimes it's helpful to offer a gentle hand to this place. I'm right now holding the jumpiness in my belly. And again, as you feel called, just start to loosen your body a little bit. Right now, I'm kind of moving my waist just to loosen up this tightness in my belly. You might continue to say, fear, you are welcome here. And then again, just sending it unconditional love in whatever way you feel called to right now. Taking a deep breath. That's a little bit of how you could support yourself when you feel afraid and this helps you to soften your fear so that you can connect more to your soul. And so next I would invite you to look around your body for a place that feels inspired. I typically go to my heart. That's a very common place. The heart is a portal to the soul. And to access my heart, I often place a gentle hand there. It helps me connect to my soul, to my heart, to get out of my, my, fear way, my fearful ways of thinking. And so just start doing your deep breathing as if, you're, if you've stopped and start breathing in light and love into your heart. And you might say, inspiration, you are welcome here. Inspiration, you are welcome here. And so as you breathe, start to sense into what inspiration feels like for you. I tend to get a little bit excited. I can feel my mind opening up. I start to feel the wider possibilities for my life. And as you breathe, just spread that feeling of inspiration throughout your body as best you can. Just imagine it traveling to your cells and your organs and your sinews and your tissues. See if you can send it all the way to the bottom of your feet and the ends of your toes and the ends of your hands and fingers. Just make sure that every part of your body feels the light and love of your soul. Wherever you are accessing it, I'm using the portal of my heart. So one more deep breath. We should all be out of our fight flight state by now. We should be in a state of restful peace. And of course, if you need more time with this exercise, you can always take more time after, after we're done if you want to try this again. And when you feel ready, I invite you to grab a magazine, open your eyes, of course, and choose three images that inspire you in some way. Now, you don't need to know why. This is um, what I would call a kind of a clairvoyant choosing with your eyes. And so let yourself be surprised. It's not a logical exercise. See if you can just continue to keep your quiet mind as you choose.
I'm just looking for one image. Just one image on the page in terms of we're not going to be doing a collage. We're going to be meditating upon one image, but we're going to pick three just for fun. So you're looking for something that just causes your heart to kind of leap out and like, ah, yes, that's the one. And then choose another one and choose another one. Sometimes for this exercise, it's really good to uh, even spend some money on some inspiring magazines. I like to go to thrift stores and uh, get really thick old magazines. They have more images in them than the new ones. Or you can go to a bookstore and buy an interesting magazine. feel called to choose more than three, that's fine. Just keep choosing until we're ready to do the next part. So even if you have five or six, that's all good. I have a good little stack here. I hope everybody has at least two or three. Hey, Shelly, do you have any suggestions for people who don't have a magazine? Um, unfortunately, I don't. Um, they'll have, probably have to do this afterwards just because um, they, they have to have something to connect to for the writing. Yeah. So. Sometimes when people don't have magazines, I say just go grab a flyer or even um, you could grab a picture book, you know, and just just bookmark a couple um, pages in a book that might be helpful. That's a good idea. Or maybe you have an old calendar laying around that has pictures. Yeah, yeah, this is definitely we did we do need pictures for this exercise so that's not something that you can um, sort of paint or manufacture at this time. So how are you, Elizabeth? Do you have your all your pictures chosen? I do. I have um, I have three here. I'll hold them. Oh, what did I just do? You don't have to show them just yet. Oh, um, okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay. So if everybody has enough pictures, the next thing that we're going to do is um, close our eyes. Okay. So this. So we've just picked these uh, pictures clairvoyantly, which is through sight. And now we're gonna pick them by feel. So I don't know if you've ever done tarot cards or cards, but basically what you do is you kind of spread them out. And so you're gonna spread your pictures and with your eyes closed, just shuffle them around. So you don't know where the pictures are. And you just close your eyes and you're gonna choose one image by feel. And this is just exercising your, your clairsentient intuition. So this is, uh, choosing by feel and you'll be it's very interesting to know that one will feel stronger than all of the other pictures that you've chosen just for today okay so I have a picture that I it's just wiggling under my fingers and it's saying choose me choose me <laughs> and so I'm going to pick it aha uh -huh, not surprised <laughs> all right so once you have your picture I'll show you, I have a inspiration journal where I, where I do this process. And so I, I will put one picture, my picture on one side and I will put my, my writing on the other. Sorry, my writing's not is showing up backwards there. But um, so just, if you have a journal, just take your picture and glue it in on one side of your journal. Some people like to do the left side. Some people like to do the right side. And then Elizabeth, when you have yours glued in, that'll just be a good indicator. And then we'll start with the, uh, the writing, the intuitive writing. Perfect. 
I'm ready. Y'all want to let us know when you're ready in the chat? We get a few in there and Think Lisa, yes, you can put them in any kind of way. Lisa's asking Shelly, my page has four picks. Can I put them in any kind of way? Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. All right, so we're gonna do a fun intuitive writing exercise. And it's it consists of five questions. So I'm just gonna read out the question and ask everybody to just write down the question. So number one, we're gonna do some free association. So what free association is, is just letting whatever pops into your mind when you look at your image, um, uh, just, just come. So it can be very absurd, it can be weird, it can be interesting, it can be sort of, what does that have to do with the image? And so the question is, what words is number one, what words pop into my mind when I look at this image? And then just free associate whatever comes, just anything, just be free. Don't censor it all. And Elizabeth, let me know when you're done so I can sort of get gauge when you're ready to go on. Okay, yeah, I'm ready. Okay, so you should have a few words now that just popped into your mind when you looked at your image. So number two, the question is, what do I love most about my image? This is heading into the love realm, which is the inspirational soul realm. What do I love most about this image? Again, Elizabeth, let me know when you're ready to move on. All right, I'm ready. Are okay. we, I feel like I always go really fast. Are, are you <laughs> fast for anybody? Can you just slow down? Well, you know, it's, it's, we're getting a little taster here, but once you have these five questions, I recommend that you might want to do one of these exercises a week or even every day. I often say if you did this every day for a year, you could, you could heal your depression. You know, I work with women who struggle with depression in my therapy practice. So, so this is just a little taster. So even if you just get one sentence, that's okay, right? So what do I love, most love about this image was the last question. The third question is, if this image could speak, what would it say to me? So as if the image was like a person talking to you, what would it say to you? It can, be, it can be say anything, just anything.
And again, you might just choose one sentence. If you were doing this by yourself, you might write a whole page. Maybe the image has a lot to say to you. Maybe it just has one thing to say to you. My, my image had lots of things to say to me. Yes, I was waiting. <laughs> yes, this is this is how we start to communicate with imagery. And this is this is a projective technique because it's just, um, you know, you start to dialogue with with uh, symbols, really images are symbols, right? And they have a lot to say. Um, and just learning what they have to say to you. This is a great exercise. So Number four, we're gonna go for a healing message. So how is this image helping me to heal? Just write that down. How is this image helping me to heal? Yeah, we can, we can go to the next one. All right. So um, finally, um, with all intuitive art, all spontaneous art, all expressive art, I always like to title the image. So it's, so the question is, what is the intuitive title of my image? So you can use words that you've used before or something might just pop in fresh, brand new word for the title. Be a long title or a short title. All right, I'm ready. Are, are some of you ready? Yeah, hopefully that uh, hopefully um, I find um, intuitive uh, imagery, which when we're talking about intuitive imagery, intuitively chose or painted or drawn imagery, it doesn't have words yet. It often doesn't have um, sort of even logical thoughts. So we're tapping into our intuition, which is kind of the bridge. <clears throat> To, to the deeper unconscious is we're kind of bringing something into the conscious mind. So you can be really, um, really free with this writing exercise. It's just a deeper way to connect and you can connect to paintings this way. You can connect to drawings this way. Anything that anybody has done all week can be connected to in this way. And um, I know that all of my imagery just loves to be named. It's just a kind of a furthering a relationship with it, you know? <laughs> So yeah, so how was that for you, Elizabeth? Um, yeah, it was great. You know, I noticed, especially in the title part, there was some words that started to come up, like as soon as I heard the question, mm 
Yeah. And I found myself starting to like question it or to like want to think about it. Yeah. And then yeah. I reminded myself like, this is intuitive. What yes. is that first word that came up? That's what intuitive is, right? It's trusting right. that bit, not thinking about it. Yeah. Um, so That's here, right. I'll share, I'll share mine. Yeah. Um, what did you pick? I have this like kind of wacky oh. costume girl. Fun. Um, which I just love. She's so playful and like wacky and kooky were words that came up for me. And um, yeah, she's reminding me to play and be myself and that that's okay. And her title, title she she wants is, there she is again. Oh, so I didn't want to let go of the image on the other side. So I glued it like There you go. Perfect. Um, <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> her title is Blossom Into You blossom into joy. Oh, Elizabeth, that's wonderful. Wonderful. And so shall I share mine? Yes. Well, mine has almost nothing on it. It's like a, I don't know if you can see that, but it's like a, it's like a water and a, and a dark night sky. And, um, I'm calling it the silence. And, uh, and I think it's coming through for me because I was on a walk last night and I noticed that my mind went completely silent and it kind of scared me. I've been going into these more unconditioned spaces recently and I was just like, oh, I felt very vast and open, but I almost didn't feel like I had a, a personality anymore. And I think that that brought up some fear for me in the night. And so um, it was it was interesting to to see. So this image was really just encouraging me to you know, not be afraid of the silence, just um, uh, the word, the, what the image said to me is you are heading into a profound period of deep quietude, do not be afraid. So that was very healing for me. And, um, and I also loved yours. And I hope everybody else had something really unique come through for them, because your, your deeper unconscious, your, your, um, your deeper self will always tell you what is on your growth edge, what you're needing to heal, what you're needing to know next. And this is one way to do it. So, yeah. 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 I love that. Thank you for sharing yours too. I love the way you tied it back into the fears that came up. Because yeah. until you said that, I hadn't really thought about that. I was just very much in this yeah. image. Right. And now that I'm thinking about it and relating it back to some of the fears that come up, I'm like, oh yeah, that's really actually a perfect message yeah. for some of the fear stuff that was coming coming up for me. So I love that. Yeah, I think we're always oscillating between fear and inspiration if we're really to think about it. You know, the soul is inspired and our human nervous system is afraid. And so it's just really important to know that I think in expressive art, you know, I always go back and forth. I go from inspiration to, um, to shadow work and uh, I like to keep a dedicated journal just for my inspiration pieces. And then I have a, I have a different journal for my shadow work. So when I'm being really intentional, like I want to go to my soul self, I want to have something to meditate on today to help me feel better. Um, I, I will typically do some kind of a quieting exercise. And then, um, you know, after this exercise is over, um, my hope is that everybody in this class will consider trying to hold on to the feeling of inspiration or the healing that came through. And so a big part of healing, anxiety, depression, all of the things that so many people struggle with um, in this world is to start to train the brain and the body to feel inspired, to feel hopeful, to feel good. And so this is just a very simple exercise because our bodies actually really connect to imagery because they come from the deeper self. If you think about dreams, I always call this kind of work like dreaming while, while we're awake kind of thing, right? So, so yeah, it's a, it's a great exercise. So the aim after we're done today is that, to, you know, see how long you can hold this feeling of inspiration or healing. See if you can hold on to it for maybe 10 minutes or 20. See if you can hold on to it for the whole day. And then when you feel ready, you can do it again. You know, you can pull another image when it feels time, but just really live into it if you can. Mm -hmm. I love these invitations and I'm loving seeing, you know, those of you who are sharing your titles, somebody said they had a cabin, it's telling them to go on vacation. Mm -hmm. I like somebody said narwhal came up. 
just because I had Narwhal come up yesterday. So now I'm like, hmm, what does Narwhal have to teach us? Although for me, it's definitely this like continued trend of playfulness and being my own self and all of that. I also saw someone say that they had kind of some angry images come up and, you know, I have some thoughts on, on what I would suggest there, but I, I'm also curious to hear your thoughts on that, Shelley. Yeah. Well, this is, this, this is, this is obviously what's up on the growth edge to heal. And so this, this uh, exercise works just as well for shadow work. So um, when I do shadow work, I typically am drawn towards some darker imagery or imagery that might make me feel afraid or angry. So I, you know, my intention was to, to, to keep it on the light side, but that said, um, if shadow is the next thing on your growth edge to work with, then you must honor that, right? You can't go out of order. And so typically like I will oscillate. So after I do some shadow work, I find, oh, I feel like I need some inspiration now, but it's very hard to go um, when you feel heavy or uh, emotionally um, not right, not feeling good. It's very hard to tap into inspiration. So that's exactly right. You can do this for shadow as well. So no problem, no problem yeah. at all, yeah. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for this. I have really enjoyed this and, you know, encouraging all of you to like, this is, this would be a great thing to spend some more time with. You could use your other images, but you could also go back, like Shelly mentioned earlier, to some of the other intuitive things we've created this week, like your Cosmic Smash book page or what we created on, what was that, Monday or Tuesday with Larissa and bring these same questions to those images and see what comes up. So really loving this and i know you've got something special to share with everyone if they've enjoyed this and want to kind of dive deeper with you tell us about that yeah so i have just created a brand new uh course a free course and uh it's it's a it's kind of set up like a challenge like we just did here it's called the intuitive creativity challenge and it starts with a simple exercise to explore the shadow and then another simple exercise to explore intuition and then i will be going into this exercise that we did today uh, that explores inspiration which i call the super conscious mind or the soul mind i go a little more into the metaphysics of it um, as to why you know why we'd want to do this exercise and why it works and so yes that's my my free gift for everybody today <laughs> beautiful, beautiful thank you so much for that it sounds juicy i put the link here in the comments you'll also find the link on our dashboard in the email i sent out this morning so be sure to grab that and i just want to thank you so much for being with us today shelly it's been a, a pleasure and an honor to get to hang out with you and yeah. Thank you uh, so much. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Thank you, everybody. It's been great being with you. Fun. Fun to see your faces. <laughs> Expressiveartworkshops.com. <laughs>